right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this podcast this week. It's uh, going to be the ankle sprain that we're going to talk about. So I would like to welcome GM Prosser, who's uh, still with us. Hello. Um, how's it going today? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, too. So it's a rainy day it's today. Cold. A little bit cold. It is. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, the weekend is really near, so... Um, That's true too. Yes, you bet. Well, let's yep. let's, uh, let's hope that we're going to have like a really nice weather for this weekend. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so this week is uh, not a live podcast, so you guys cannot join us um, on this podcast. It's just to uh, increase the quality of the podcast. So if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to put it on the Facebook page. Because during the podcast, I'll be there and I'll answer the questions also. Um, so don't don't be shy to ask any uh, questions during the podcast, um, as you're gonna see it really live right now. So no problem for that. It's just not live, so you cannot join us on Zoom. But with that said, uh, we're gonna start the podcast um, uh, and we're gonna talk about the ankle sprain. The good thing about the ankle sprain is really related or connected to the. Uh, topic that we had last week, uh, plantar fasciitis, because it's the same anatomy structure that um, we are talking about. We're talking about the ankle and uh, less about the foot, but still the portion of the foot is in the topic here. So if uh, you didn't have a chance to watch the plantar fasciitis last week, uh, go on YouTube, um, the link on YouTube, and uh, you will have the podcast. You can view it and uh, you can see the anatomy of um, of the foot and the ankle and all what we're saying about it. Uh, this week, we're going to also have some pictures and, and videos to show you guys um, about the anatomy structure and the injury um, process and prevention and all that. Um, so uh, I hope it's going to be clear enough for you guys. Uh, but like I said, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to ask. <clears throat> Now, like I said, uh, the anatomy of the foot and the ankle is very, uh, it's a very complex structure. Uh, The ankle joints provide a lot of flexibility and range of motion, but sometimes we sacrifice the stability for this mobility as a result of a risk of injury is increased at that time. Uh, To understand this situation, we need to jump into the anatomy again. So let me share the screen. And we're going to jump into the pictures right here. All right. You guys are going to not really see us, but that's all right. Um, Yeah. So like you see on the pictures right here, um, the tibia, the fibula, and the talus uh, for uh, the articulation of the ankle joints. Uh, The talar body is wedge and shaped and its anterior portion being wider than this, its posterior. This uh, irregularity contributes directly to the joint's positional stability. Now, Gian, can you explain that to us with a visual um, picture? Let me just uh, increase that view. There you go. You bet. So we have a foot right here. So you can see this bone right here is the talus and it is wedged in between the bottom part of the tibia here and the fibula here. So that wedge, which Francis is going to talk about later, really contributes to the stability of the ankle. So if you look at the talus, I'm just going to move this forward. The talus is really wide in the front portion here. And then as we go back, it's thinner. So as when we're in a dorsiflex position, what dorsiflexion means basically is that the knee and the toes are relatively close together. When we're in that dorsiflex position, the front part of the talus is wedged between the bones. So that's a very stable position of the ankle. As we come forward like so into a plantar flexed or toes pointed position, we, we come into the thinner part of the wedge. And that is why there's a lot less ankle stability in a plantar flex position. So that's why people are more likely to have trouble with a heel that's higher or if they're descending inclines. Because again, the thinner part of the talus is wedged between the bones, which is there's basically more wiggle room, essentially. So there's more translation and uh, that can create some issues with stability. Awesome. Now, 
um, my English uh, skills will be really at the test right now because the anatomy has really hard words or complex words. So let me try it out. Um, the juxtaposition of the tibia and the fibula is maintained by the tibiofibular syndesmosis. It consists uh, of an enterous <laughs> rosterous uh, ligament, an anterior, inferior, posterior, inferior, and inferior transverse tibiofibular ligaments. Now you can see them here, not really uh, clear, but it's still in this picture right here. Um, now, an ankle sprain is a misnomer um, since the injury typically involve both the ankle and the subtalar joint. These two joints move in concert to execute what should be correctly viewed as combined ankle foot movement. Now, Jeanne, could you illustri illustrate this to us? Um, let me just stop sharing that. And there you go. So back to my foot, this is a right foot. So when the ankle moves into inversion, which is the most common kind of sprain, we see this type of movement. So the foot goes in, the ankle goes out. Um, so again, this being a right foot. And then the opposite movement to that one, when the foot goes outward is called eversion. The most um, common ankle sprain is a combination of an inversion and plantar flexed movement. And as a result, we end up damaging the ligaments on the outside aspect of, of the ankle. And like we talked about before, um, that plantar flexion is often involved because that the wedge of the talus is it's less stable in that plantar flex position. Awesome. Now let me go back to the pictures. Um, this one here. All right. So the determining factors in ankle injury, as in most injuries, are the joint's position at the time of the injury, the magnitude, the direction, and the rate of applied forces, and the resistance provided by the joint structures. The ankle foot injury are commonly the results of walking on uneven surfaces stepping in the holes like the gopher holes in Wainwright or rolling the ankle during a, a cutting maneuver uh, or landing on something on its unexpected while jumping like uh, like someone else's foot, like in basketball, which we're going to see later on. The majority of the ankle sprain results from an inversion injury. Am I correct, Gian? Yes, and that's what that picture on the bottom right of the screen shows is an inversion injury for sure. So just to clarify, ligaments are fibrous bands of tissue that connect bones to each other and stabilize joints. So um, as you can see in the pictures, um, you can see the um, ligaments on the inside and the outside of the ankle. Um, so the ligaments are much denser and broader on the inside of the ankle than the outside. And that's another, another factor that lends itself to um, increased likelihood of inversion to eversion sprains. Um, so a sprain occurs when one or more ligaments is stretched beyond its normal range. And that will typically occur, as Francis said, as a result of a sudden twist, turn, or roll. There are three types of, st of sprains. The most common, so around 85% of ankle sprains, are a lateral inversion sprain. So again, like that bottom right screen. Um, so the foot rolls in and the outside ligaments are damaged. And we actually have a video to show, to show that mechanism of injury. So yeah, this makes your ankle hurt just watching it. There's going to be a replay here. I'll show it from the back. Right Here's where here. you can really see. There we go. Yeah. That is a, a dramatic but typical type of ankle sprain where the outside ligaments are affected. Um, we also will see medial or eversion sprains, and that's where the foot rolls outward and the ligaments on the inside of the, the uh, ankle are damaged. And the final type is probably the most devastating type. Um, that's a syndesmosis or a hyal spray. And that will usually occur uh, secondary to a combination of the ankle rolling and the lower leg rotating. So what we see happen in that type of sprain, I don't know if you can see me here, is that the ligaments that hold the tibia and the fibula together, they become lax. So you lose that inherent stability because these bones can gap apart and that allows the talus to, to move more than it ought to do. 
Um, in addition to the structures that are injured in this frame, we also have three degrees of ankle sprain. So I'm just get you to pull up those pictures if you can, please, Francis. So in a first degree sprain, the ligament is slightly stretched. These people typically present with mild pain, swelling, and tenderness. They're sore, but the ankle's not overly dysfunctional. They usually have no bruising and the, the joint remains stable. Uh, weight bearing can be painful, but it's not really out of the question. And these, these folks will usually recover in about one to three weeks. In the second degree sprain, the ligament is partially torn. So these folks will have more moderate pain, swelling, and tenderness, possibly have bruising. They'll also have mild to moderate joint instability, as well as a loss of range of motion and, and function. So they will have some pain with weight bearing and walking. And these folks usually will recover within three to eight weeks. So it's, it's certainly a longer, longer healing time. The third degree sprains are the most serious. And you can see on the picture there in the lower right, the ligament is torn completely through. So these people will present with severe pain, swelling, tenderness, lots of bruising. Um, they'll often have considerable instability and loss of function as well as loss of range. Um, they're often unable to weight bear or to walk. And third degree sprains can take several months to recover from. Sometimes these injuries will require surgery, but this is certainly not guaranteed. A lot of times we think when a ligament is ruptured that surgery is a for sure thing. And it's actually not the case with ankles. One of the reasons for that is because we have so many other ligaments that if we can regain um, balance and strength, oftentimes those other ligaments in combination with very good balance and strength can compensate for the loss of the structure of that ligament. So surgery for these, these individuals may be required, but it's certainly not an absolute. And we always try to exhaust conservative measures before we go that route. So Francis, what would you recommend in terms of preventing ankle sprains? Well, the first one that we need to <clears throat> focus on is on it's our balance, like you uh, already uh, mentioned uh, priorly. So remember that side impacts balance because of our body move uh, based on anticipation, experience, and expectation from what we see. With our eyes, um, our body use its ability to sense where you are in space. Um, that's what we call the proprioception. There are 45 miles of nervous tissue running throughout your body. That's a lot. Um, there, these nerves also helps you maintain balance. So for example, the nerves in your foot and ankle helps your, you sense the surface you're walking, running and jumping on. These nerves communicate with the brain and uh, which in, in, in turn, activates the muscle in the lower leg and the foot to maintain stability. So our third uh, balance monitor is something called the vestibular system, which is the work of the inner ear telling you uh, you're moving, you're spinning or falling and some other change in our body position. You, you are likely in good shape when all these three balance system are working together. Fortunately, there are ways to improve your balance, which can help you prevent this injury. Uh, one way to do this is by practicing balancing on one foot when brushing your feet, for example, or performing light upper body exercise. Um, these can be made more uh, difficult by standing on one unstable surface or closing the eyes. Um, the nerves in your foot and ankle will continue to adjust and train the surrounding muscle in your ankle, leg, hip, and even lumbar stabilizers uh, to activate the co and control your movements. So, and also at the gym, we do have some other equipment like the DynaDisc, the BOSU, um, to work on our unstable surfaces, um, but you can also do it at home. Um, with uh, some equipment that you have, you don't really like even sand. Uh, if you go on the beach, uh, that can be an uneven surface or uh, that's going to help your stabilization surfaces. Um, the second thing would be strengthen your core. Uh, your core. Uh, the strength and the function of your hips and trunk is important for your movement. Uh, imagine running lightly and abruptly changing direction. If uh, you lack strength in your core, your body will likely keep moving due to the an absence of a hip control and your center of gravity will move 
pass what your foot and ankle can control. Uh, then the end results could be a rolled ankle and or a fall. Uh, we can also see that in football. Uh, for example, wild receivers, that's what they do. They move really quick in one direction. They're going to change direction really quick. And uh, if they don't have a really good core, a really good hip stability, um, the impact goes directly to your ankle and your foot. So that's why you want to have a really uh, good core um, to prevent that. Um, the third one would be uh, build up your ankle strength. So building up the ankle strength is a great uh, preventative technique. This can be done with a single leg strengthening exercise like squats or lunge, um, dips, uh, rubber band, a strengthening workout. We did gave some exercise last week um, on the last podcast. So these exercises are really good too. Uh, a stronger base will make it easier to stay on your feet and control changes in your body position. <clears throat> Um, the other one is uh, improving flexibility. So a balance between strength and flexibility is important. Uh, simple stretching, uh, 30 to 60 seconds uh, after a light warm up uh, can help relieve discomfort uh, and promote adequate mobility of the lower leg, ligament or joints. Hypermobility is a sy symptoms of an ankle sprain. So stretching could that should be performed carefully and comfortably. Um, also, um, flexibility should be done, like I would recommend every day. Um, don't be shy to do some flexibility, even when you're in this uh, sedentary position watching TV, that could be a good, perfect environment to do some static stretching. You don't need to do stretching only during a workout. It's not mandatory, you can do it at any time and you don't need fitness equipment you don't need nothing actually you just need to do it so that's why it's a really good thing to do and the more you do it the better the more flexible you're going to get um the fifth recommendation would be uh you got to go back progressive into your activity so a balance between the strength the flexibility is important simple stretching uh, as we mentioned earlier um and you should just go progressively into your uh, activity that you were doing before and also progressive into the intensity, um, the level of uh, the duration. Also, sometimes if you do feel some ankle sprain after uh, not ankle sprain, like just um, inflammation or anything during an activity, like after 30 minutes, you're just going to stop the activity um, for now because that's what it can tolerate for now. So that is something that you should do um progressive activity um the sixth point is also a support um an alternative it's optional but it's also really um well appreciated so if you guys have netflix and you did watch this series the last dance with michael jordan you can see him our legend in basketball uh you can see him uh, getting taped and he's not the only ta uh, player who's going to get taped before a game. So the taping, let me show you a picture of what I'm talking about right now. It's something really popular in sports. Um, you can see this here, the, uh, the white tape on the on the right side. Now, this is not a, it doesn't really look finished, but uh, you get the picture of uh, what kind of support that does do. It's white tape. It's not, I'm not talking about Kinizu tape, um, but uh, this taping is technically saying uh, doing the same thing as a brace. So you want to have support into your ankle and that should be temporary because our goal is to bring back your, your ankle to the same strength that it was as it was before or even stronger. So uh, these taping can help you to get back progressively into your sports activity. So you can uh, use that taping here. So the big difference between these two um, Jan will talk more about it later, but what I can say is, um, when I do these taping, sometimes, uh, if the, the person sweat a lot, uh, during the game, we're going to have to redo the taping during the game because, um, sweat will, um, not, will, will reduce the, the, the support that this white taping is doing, um, during the game. So that's the only thing, but if after a while, um, you are uh, taping yourself uh, before every match. Um, you're taping, not bracing. I'm talking about. 
Uh, it's probably even better to buy a brace because you're going to like save more money. Um, it, uh, the cost a lot of money just to do a taping, um, even for your team, even if it's your team is paying for it, uh, sometimes it's even better to have a brace that it's going to be also adapted to your situation. So, like I said, it's, um, after a post injury. So these two things, it's post injury. It's not, uh, fixing the problem. Um, it's supporting your ankle. And also, uh, sometimes as experience as an athletic trainer, um, I see some uh, athlete getting injured during game and they come see me and they want a miracle and they ask me to do that taping so they can go back in the game. Um, what I can say is, uh, nope, that's a big nope because the inflammation and injury is an injury. The taping will not stop the injury and it will not fix the injury. So you got to be treated. And then when you're going to get treated and uh, you're going to, did all, you're going to do all the prevention that we just mentioned. Um, the taping is a good thing or the brace is a good thing, but it's not a thing during an injury for sure. So keep that in mind. Um, other than that, um, what, what else can you, can you uh, bring on Gian on that? I think I covered everything, but maybe I forgot something. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Nope. Your prevention stuff. Yeah, that's good. So in terms of if, if, the prevention stuff doesn't work or you haven't tried it and you do end up with an injury. Um, what we can offer from a physio perspective, uh, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about that. So immediately after an injury, if it's a first and second degree, first or second degree, what we'll typically recommend is compression. So either with a brace like this, you can see this guy, it looks like a little figure eight, basically it's a tensor bandage that will provide some compression. There we are. And then this is can also be good, but I do find some of our folks are a little resistant to it. But the full blown um, compression st st stockings can also really help with uh, the prevention of the edema really accumulating in the ankle. We we don't want the swelling to get out of control because that will delay the recovery. It will further limit range of motion and create other problems. So in that initial stage, um, it's it's the the whole rice concept. You know the rice ice compression elevation. Um, we do like to initiate some exercises that are very safe immediately with our, with these folks. So, um, if you don't mind, Francis, I'll just get you to bring up that ASP exercise sheet. So our initial focus is really getting dorsiflexion. So again, that's with the toes and the knee coming, the front of the knee coming closer together. We really want to focus on that. You'll see it right at the beginning here. Yeah. Right. Those first two exercises are, um, are being used to increase dorsiflexion. Um, so that's that's a priority. We also uh, focus on some isometric strengthening. So if you can just go down a little bit, that's basically strength without movement. And we also do some, in the very initial stages, we get folks to work on balance on the unaffected foot because the research has showed that there is some crossover onto the affected side. So um, it might be too painful to do single leg balancing on the sore side, but you typically were fine on the, uh, on the unaffected one and there can be some value to that. For the third degree uh, ankle sprain, so those are the ones that have complete ligamentous ruptures, we'll typically recommend for them that they go into an air boot or an air cast and have crutches um, with the compression stockings underneath. And what Francis is showing you now, he's just going through the, the later stages of that um, ankle sprain pro program. Um, we also start our phase three people with the same exercises immediately, but they stay in that phase one exercise stage longer. So the exercises are the same. They're just um, over a longer period of time for our phase or for our uh, grade three sprains. Um, we also will hand out Bragg Kodiaks, which are basically like ice machines that we can sign out to members and they can be really useful. Um, in the acute stage for, for the grade one, two, and three people, there is a role for topical and oral medication, particularly anti-inflammatories. That's something that you'd want to discuss with your physician or pharmacist. Um, we provide manual or hands-on therapy as required. Sometimes, and again, like we talked about with these individuals, their most common mechanism of injury is they go into plantar flexion and inversion. And what can happen sometimes is that the talus bone, this guy right here, doesn't return into its normal resting position. And that will affect the ability to dorsiflex. So sometimes what we need to do is get that talus here gliding backwards better because it's stuck forward as a result of that mechanism. So that's that's uh, care that we'll often provide as well. Um, we also use some modalities such as interferential current, ultrasound, um, and contrast baths. 
Uh, after seven to 14 days for the third degree injuries, so those are a complete rupture, we make the decision whether to transition from the air boot to a brace. Um, it just kind of depends on the situation and, and how they're ambulating. So again, we progress that program that Francis just went through quickly. We progress it um, by trans uh, transitioning from isometric strengthening into band work or more concentric and eccentric strengthening and weight bearing training, as well as more advanced balance tra training. So like we talked about before, adding in some variables that make balance more difficult with their eyes closed, unstable surf surfaces, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we do from a physio's perspective. So, Gian, um, how do we know if someone needs an x-ray? Um, so, yeah, that's kind of a cool question. Um, so, we have, it's actually a Canadian Canadian um, thing, so that's really neat. So, the uh, we use something called the Ottawa Ankle Rules, which some of you may have heard of. Um, so, these rules were developed in 1992 uh, by a group of physicians at the Ottawa Civic Hospital. So historically, before 1992, most patients who are presenting to emergency after ankle injuries were being imaged or having x-rays, even though the vast majority were coming back negative for fractures. So as a result, they were seeing a lot of needless x-rays, which of course are time consuming. They drain the system economically. There's also radiation exposure to the individuals being x-rayed. So as a result, the Ottawa ankle rules were developed. Um, so essentially what we look for to determine if an x-ray is required. So these two bumps, the bumps on the inside and the outside of the ankle, we all have them, even those of us who are chubbier than we should be, we have these ankle bumps. Um, if there is pain in the malleolar region and their bony tenderness, so typically to the tips of the malleolus here on the inside and the outside, but we like to palpate or, or poke up to about six centimeters above the end. So if there's pain there or on the inside or the outside, or they have an in, these patients have an inability to weight bear immediately after the injury, as well as at the emergency department or when they see their clinician, because I, I can order these images as well, um, that would meet the criteria for an x-ray. Um, another, another criteria is pain in the midfoot zone. So that's through this region. So just a little bit beyond the ankle. And we're looking for if there's bony tenderness here at this tip of their uh, fifth toe or pain in the navicular, which is this bone right here, and then the same weight bearing criteria. So if they were unable to weight bear immediately post-injury or for four steps after they report to their clinician, then those folks would require, require x-ray. So what's really interesting about the Ottawa ankle rules is uh, the research has shown that they're 98.5 sensitive in individuals over six years of age. So that's that's really good. The accuracy um, is really, really great for that. And they they feel the research has shown that um, the Ottawa ankle rules and adherence to them has reduced the number of unnecessary x-rays by 30 to 40 percent. So a very valuable tool for clinicians for sure. Hmm. So <clears throat> as uh, also what I can add on not on the x-ray, but on the um, rehabilitation reconditioning, uh, exercise after you're done with the physio you're always going to end up uh, with the reconditioning specialist to uh, reinforce that ankle so just keep in mind that uh, even if you can walk uh, that's a good example i like to use um like if you're a basketball player and then you got injured you got an ankle sprain you can't walk anymore you go see the physio the physio will make you walk again which is a miracle that's good but uh, even if you're <laughs> able to walk doesn't mean that you're able to play basketball. So that's why when you come see us, the reconditioning specialist or the PSP personal, uh, we, we're gonna work on, uh, on your uh, fitness to make you stronger than what you were before. Now, on the uh, video that you guys saw, um, that was a preventable injury. As you can see, the way he fell, he didn't fell on somebody, he didn't fell on something that it was not uh, like, uh, unexpected it's just his foot was rolled already when he fell and it just created the uh, ankle sprain now in basketball it does happen sometimes that somebody will be underneath you and then your foot will go on the person and then you're going to have an ankle sprain now this we call this um, not really preventable because you can't really prevent that from happening it's it's just going to happen so or even when you step on a gopher hole um, we can't really do anything like a hole is a hole 
that's a hard thing to to prevent the injury from happening but all the rests it is preventable like we said uh, earlier uh, for example a basketball uh, football player while receiver when you have to change direction you know that you're going to change direction uh really quick because you want to uh, get the defensive player out of your way you need to have a stronger ankle you need to have a stronger muscles in your body and be more ready than what you were before to prevent that injury from happening so that's why it's really important to continue your reconditioning after you're done after you don't feel any pain you, you, you think you're all right and you can't really rely on your brace or your taping so that will be the cure okay i don't know if i'm clear what, what i'm saying right now it's a good support but it's not fixing the problem. You want to fix the problem with the reconditioning program and the fitness at the gym and get you stronger, uh, get your ankle stronger. So you're not relying on these taping anymore or these braces. So that's would be, that would be my recommendation because most of my, um, my patients, um, actually all the years that I've been working into, uh, my, my world, uh, they kind of gave up halfway when they're done with their rec reconditioning, thinking that they're ready to go back 100% in their sports. Um, uh, just takes, for example, professional athletes, how they come back to play uh, these days. They take more time. Um, Connor McDavid is a good example. Sidney Crosby is a good example. Uh, they take more time than what we think that it's good because when they want to come back to play, they want to come back 100% and they don't want to have that injury back in the process or in the problem again so that's a good way of thinking uh it might take a little bit more time but when you're going to get back you're going to that you're going to be ready 100 percent or even better than what you were before so <clears throat> all right looks like this is all the time that we have for the podcast today um i hope you guys did enjoy this podcast and it helps you to better understand the ankle sprain injury and also give you the tools how to prevent this injury from happening again and how to rehab uh, your ankle. So send us your questions by email or even in the comments uh, on Facebook or YouTube uh, below and we, we will uh, answer them with a lot of pleasure. Um, <clears throat> now to uh, message for uh, the future. Now next week our uh, podcast would be a really interesting one. I hope you guys are going to be following us uh, up for that podcast. We're going to talk about Ironman and triathlons. Our special guest is a warrant officer that is in saint jean sur richelieu in Quebec. Um, his name is Warrant Officer Frédéric Nalin. He is into the Ironman <clears throat> competition, and he will come on the podcast to talk about us, about the preparation. So when you're new, if you're a beginner, or even if you are uh, an advanced uh, triathlonist or you, you want to do an Ironman, he will be there to answer your question or even give you tips on the, um, how to start, where to start, and how to do it. And we're going to give you also uh, some uh, risk injury prevention about this kind of competition because it's, it's a lot, a lot of training. You got to uh, remember that you can't just uh, subscribe to an Ironman. Uh, in two weeks and go do it because the risk of injury are really high. So I hope you guys are going to be there, how it's going to work. It's not going to be live. We're going to do the podcast, not live with Frédéric Nalin. But after <clears throat> the presentation of the podcast at three o'clock, we will have a live portion. So me and Gian and Frédéric Nalin, Warren Officer Nalin, will be on Zoom on the Facebook page. And we will be waiting for you guys to come on and on Zoom or just ask a question in the comments. And uh, we will answer the question directly to you. Even him, he will answer your questions. So don't miss it. Next Thursday at 3 o'clock, watch the podcast. And right after that, come on Zoom and join us for your questions. Tonight, um, there is the trivia night. Uh, it's hosted by Jessica Martin. So uh, I hope you guys are going to be there. I know there is a lot of people already. They were saying to me that uh, around 30 people already subscribed for this uh, trivia. Um, keep in mind that there are some, uh, some gift cards that uh, you can win with uh, that uh, trivia. So I think it's a draw that you can just, uh, if you win the, the trivia, you get uh, your name into a draw to win a gift card. So uh, be there. It's, uh, you can fill up. 
the the form you have to fill the form before participating into the trivia so i hope you guys are going to participate tonight at uh, this trivia at uh, seven o'clock so on this facebook page so just uh, be there um um tonight at seven and uh what about you Gian? do you have any news any information that you want to send to us not really no <laughs> we're just trucking along hoping hoping to open things back up soon and yeah, yeah. no nope, nothing uh, too exciting on my end we can't wait to go back to the normal so yeah, good times i hope you guys are gonna have a really uh like me a really nice sweater uh, no matter where you are in this world uh this weekend um just enjoy go outdoor do some a lot of physical activity and uh till then be safe happy and healthy thanks <laughs>